In this video, you will learn about how to use multiple linear regression. One threat to the accuracy of the simple linear regression from before is what's called omitted variable bias. This occurs when a variable not included in the regression is correlated with both the explanatory variable and the response variable. Imagine we are looking at the relationship between the study time before an exam and the success achieved. If we just consider these two variables, we find a negative relationship. The more a person studies, the lower her exam score will be. Strange, isn't it? Since IQ is positively related to exam success and negatively re related to study time, we need to include this variable in the regression. Then, with the help of multiple regression, I now estimate the positive effect of study time. Let's estimate a multiple regression model using the LM function, including all the variables in the dataset. Future margin is now modeled as a function of margin, n orders, n items, and so on. We save the model as multiple LM. Just as before, we use summary now with multiple LM as an argument. That worked. Although, we now encounter other problems. Multicollinearity is one threat to a multiple linear regression. This occurs whenever one explanatory variable can be explained by the remaining explanatory variables. Then, the regression coefficients become unstable and the standard errors reported by the linear model are underestimates. Due to high correlation between n orders and n items, as well as margin per order and margin per item, these variables are candidates for multicollinearity. To systematically check all variables in a model for multicollinearity, we calculate the variance inflation factors, WIFs, using the WIF function from the RMS package. These indicate the increase in the variance of an estimated coefficient due to multicollinearity. A WIF higher than 5 is problematic and values above 10 indicate poor regression estimates. Let's look at our model's variance inflation factors. As expected, the WIFs for n orders and n items, as well as margin per order and margin per item, are rather high. Hence, we exclude one of each pair from the regression, namely n items and margin per order. Here are the WIFs of the new model. They are all acceptable now. Finally, we are ready to interpret the model output. The intercept gives the expected margin in year 2 when all independent variables are set to 0. Hence, we observe an expected margin in year 2 of roughly 23, given that every explanatory variable is equal to 0. It's usually hard to make interpretations for just the value of the intercept in a multivariate regression model. The coefficient of each explanatory variable gives the effect that a one-unit change in that variable has on the expected margin in year 2, with all other variables being held constant. The coefficient estimate of roughly 0.4 for the margin variable signifies a 0.4 euro increase in future margins, given an increase of 1 euro for margins in the current year. Let's also look at the coefficient significance. By default, a t-test about whether or not the respective coefficient is zero is conducted. If the p-value in the last column is smaller than 0.05, we can conclude the coefficient to be significantly different from zero at the 0.05 significance level. 
In our example, all variables except gender, age and the items per order are significant at the 95% confidence level. There is also a test if all coefficients are simultaneously equal to zero. But more on that later. Let's practice first.